Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Video Studio and today a quick video to share with you how to remove dust from your sensor on your video clip. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now, we are on the edit page and I have two clips in my timeline. One is gonna be fairly easy to remove. It's gonna be that dot right here. And the other one gonna need a bit more work. There is a few more spots and the clip is a bit more complicated since the fins of the turtle are passing through those spots and we get a lot of particle going through the water. So let's jump into it right now. First off, we're gonna go over to the color page. I've done a quick color grading for my clip. Hit option S to bring a new serial node, or I can just right click and add new node and add a new corrector. Then I'm gonna search in my library for dead pixel fixer. So we're gonna take that and drag that onto our node right here. Here we have a bunch of functionality we can choose from to draw the mask and to basically choose the filling method. We're gonna go through that after. If the thing that you're trying to solve is fairly simple like this one, no need to change anything. You can stay in special and grid gonna do the job or you can choose smooth if you prefer that. So first off, we're gonna make sure that here we have the open effects that is selected and then we're gonna zoom onto our clip to be more precise. We're gonna go over to the point that we try to erase and then we're just gonna drag or mouse to create a window right there to cover that spot. If you're unsure of your selection, you can always remove the show patch to make sure that everything is looking good. And as you can see right now, the filling method doesn't really matter in a scenario like this one because it's a fairly smooth background already. So it doesn't really matter what you choose. Since it's just on your sensor, there is no need to track it because it's going to stay always at the same spot. You can just go through your clip quickly to make sure that everything is looking good. In our case, I think it's fine. And now let's play it in full screen. And as you can see with the before, and after it looks a lot better now now what if you have a clip like this one that is a bit more complicated we have multiple dots all around the clip different size different intensity we get a subject passing through those different points and if it was not enough we get also particle going through the water that's just gonna pass through a spot and that could cause some problems so now let's see how we can correct that so same thing here i'm gonna bring a new node i'm gonna bring the dead pixel fixer and we're gonna use the same principle. I'm gonna start by here zooming into my clip and we're gonna draw a first one above this one, for example. Now in a scenario like this one, that's where the fill method start to come into play. You got a bunch of different choices. You can choose spatial, clone, blend clone. I would recommend in 99% of cases to stay in spatial, that's gonna be better and to then play around with the different fill method. In this case, as you can see, we get grid, horizontal, vertical, patchy, and smooth. It's very rare for me that the patchy is working as soon as you get stuff passing through the patch. It's just gonna be very obvious and just blur it and change the color. So I don't really like that. Generally, when you have the edge of a big object passing through your mask, also grid, horizontal, and vertical are not gonna work so well. Because as you can see right now, when we're getting closer to the fins, the fins is getting stretched by that grid or that horizontal mode. So what we want to do instead is select smooth. We might lose some texture sometimes if we were on the fins, for example, we're gonna lose a bit of that texture. But in that case right here, where we just add the edge, I think that's the one that's gonna do the minimal amount of damage. Right now, the two that I'm gonna try to tackle are those two big ones. They are a bit less strong in terms of intensity. They are less dark than the first one but they are bigger. So for that, we're gonna play around with the global blend. To do that, we're gonna need to create a new node because otherwise playing with the global blend gonna also affect all first one right here. And I don't want that for this specific case. So we're gonna add a new node and we're gonna bring the dead pixel fixer. Then here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna zoom in my composition. We're gonna draw our mask. Now, as you can see, as the mask is getting bigger, we can see the grid uh, a bit more. So choosing smooth is going to be better in that scenario. The issue is that sometimes smooth can be too smooth. Right now, as you can see, there is a big difference between the grain naturally present in the image and the mask that we've created. It's pretty much a solid blue mask. So we want to bring back some of that texture. That's where the global blend came into place. So now we can decrease the blend slightly, not too much, because as you can see right now, if it's at zero, we have the spot being back, but we want to just decrease it slightly so we bring back some of that texture right here 
And now if we give it a scroll, as you can see, we have something that looks a lot more natural in my opinion. We still get some few artifacts right there, but I don't think that's gonna be too much of a problem. It's very hard to get it perfect anyway, so as long as it looks clean enough, that's good, I think. If you want to fine tune the result, you can always play around with the soft edge and the overall size to just mask perfectly your spot. So don't forget to deactivate the show patch and scroll through everything to see how it look without the patch because sometimes the patch can be distracted. In this one, for example, the soft edges was too much so I'm gonna reduce it a little bit more and I'm gonna increase the size to cover up fully my point because there is some movement happening throughout the clip and because of the stabilization of my sensor. Same here, I'm gonna increase the blend a little bit more and I'm gonna readjust a bit the position. Now let's see it in full screen and it looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. Now I'm gonna repeat that process for each of the little spots that I want to remove and make sure to play around with the different filling method, soft edge and blend to get the best result. But just keep in mind that this technique got its limitation and as soon as you're gonna have too much movement with your subject passing through those spots, it might be very difficult to get a decent result and I will just recommend to leave it as is, unfortunately. Where these techniques really shine is whenever you have a constant background like grass, sky, water, or like anything that have either not too much movement or a constant color or texture. So here is the final result, that's the before and after. As you can see, it's not perfect, but in my opinion, that does the job. I hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.